You are listening to the Sarah High School Podcast, your connection to the scholars, the athletes, the men of faith, the men of humility, Sarah Padres. Hello and welcome to the Sarah High School Podcast. We are here today with Kevin Attard, one of our athletic trainers here at Sarah. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, we just um, experienced March, which is uh, National, National mm-hmm. Athletic Trainer Month, and I wish we had you on a little bit earlier so we could have celebrated <laughs> it then, but... Um, but we have some big news that we want to share on this podcast about an award that you received. But before that, mm-hmm. I just wanted to maybe kind of learn a little bit more about your background and what brought you to Sarah. I know you're a San Mateo Bearcats. You're a local yep. guy. <laughs> um, why don't you let us know about just, um, you know, your background and um, and maybe your um, college. I know you have a bachelor's and a master's. Just tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so I started, um, I went to high school at San Mateo High School. Um, and that's where I kind of, you know, fell in love with sports. I mean, I always loved sports, but um I participated in the sports teams there, and um, I wasn't good enough to uh, take my uh, athletics to the <laughs> collegiate career, so uh, I kind of uh, fell in love with the medicine side, because I had a few injuries in high school, or lengthy rehabs, and so kind of working with like physical therapists, athletic trainers, that kind of uh, sparked my like love for like sports medicine in general, and that's when I kind of uh, decided to go uh, pursue that route. So before we go on, so obviously, so basketball is one of your sports. I'm just guessing yeah. because I'm feeling extremely short right now. <laughs> um, did, what other sports did you play growing up? Uh, I played soccer and baseball, but um, as I started to grow taller, basketball became more of my uh, focus. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And so and you're saying, that, like, through some of your injuries, you, you grew uh, very fond and mm-hmm. had a huge respect for sports medicine in general. Yeah, for sure. That's exciting. Yeah, it was, like, really fun. Not the injury, but exciting no, the, that you were able to learn your path terrible. through that. Yeah. Exactly. But learning about, like, the anatomy and just the whole process. That part was uh, really interesting to me. I'll bet. Yeah. And so then after uh, graduating from San Mateo, you went Mm -hmm. to University of Oregon, right? Yeah, that is correct. And I got my um, bachelor's of human physiology there. Awesome. You couldn't Mm -hmm. have picked a a better athletic school, right? Uh, The ducks are awesome. Exactly. (laughs) Um, Our uh, sports programs weren't the most successful (laughs) in the San Mateo when I was there. So, uh, you know, University of Oregon kind of jumped out. Yeah, I bet. Nice powerhouse. Great uniforms. I always love the ducks uniforms. Um, cool. So tell me about your experience there. So you, I, I think that you worked on some some of the sporting teams, yeah. right? So tell us about your mm-hmm. kind of um, formative education and, and what sports teams you worked on and how those kind of help lead you to mm-hmm. the next path. Yeah, so I um, kind of started my career at University of Oregon um, doing sports nutrition as like an intern. So I would work with the um, football team um, during the like morning workouts or you know, post-afternoon workouts, just kind of providing nutrition. And that's what kind of got my um, foot in the door for working with the sports teams there. Um, so that transitioned into working with a club sports as like a first responder, if you oh, want to say. Um, I did that for about a year, and then that um, led me to like kind of interviewing um, with Oregon football. However, I <laughs> decided to go toward uh, basketball instead. Awesome. Um, Stick with your sport. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love basketball. Um, so then I ended up working with the uh, basketball team at University of Oregon for a few months, so... Cool. That's kind of uh, the experience I had working with the sports teams there. And what were your kind of day-to-day um, responsibilities or um, anything that jumped out of you in, in terms of, like, an experience you can remember that kind of you'll never forget? Um, I mean, there's always a few. Um, i definitely say one of the more uh, starstruck moments I had was uh, when I was interviewing for Oregon football. Um, Marcus Mariota walked in on my interview, oh, wow. which, I mean, um, he just won the Heisman a few years ago, and it was just like, Whoa. You're like, starstruck. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but yeah, that was like one of my more memorable moments. Um, or when I worked with basketball, that was uh, Bull Bull, who's uh, like the first like big five-star recruit they had for basketball, and he was 7'2". Oh, my and gosh. And so just looking at him, it was like, wow, like this is like NBA guys, like crazy. Totally. So yeah, those were uh, some more of my memorable moments. That awesome. I had. Yeah. Yeah. And so like your day-to-day, like with the team itself, so you, I mean, were yeah. you... So I'd um, go in there in the mornings, kind of help out with, like, some treatments, like, really basic stuff, because at that point I was still, like, a student, and so I was ice, um, maybe helping out with some, like, electrical therapy stuff, um, and then they'd practice and then post treatments as well. So that was kind of my day-to-day operation. Awesome. And then your undergrad is in human physiology, is Mm -hmm. that right, your bachelor's? Yeah. And so how do you feel that your hands-on training, you know, on the field, or I'm sorry, on the court in, in the basketball case... Um, how does that kind of, um, in, you know, help or benefit your your scholastic education? Um, I'd say, like, the degree itself was a pretty rigorous one. Um, you know, most, I say, athletic trainers go 
through a kinesiology degree for bachelor's. And not saying that my degree is any better than that, but Absolutely, it, was a, it was very geared towards pre-med. So it was very heavily like anatomy based. And so I feel like I got a pretty good understanding of the body oh, itself awesome. doing undergrad. So it put me in, I think, a good spot when I went to get my master's degree. I felt like I was a little bit ahead of the curve with, with that part. Oh, I'll bet. I can only imagine. And your master's is um, in athletic training. Mm-hmm. And where did you receive that? Um, at Pacific University up in uh, Hillsborough, Oregon. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So you didn't go too far. How far is that from yeah. Eugene? Uh, about a couple hours, which is a big influence. I could just move my all my stuff from my apartment <laughs> just down the road. Yeah. There you go. So. Awesome. Well, so um, following your, uh, did you do any hands-on training during your master's aside from coursework that, that yeah. you did that? Um, so that was part of the requirement. Okay. Um, you had like clinical rotations. Um, so during my time there, I worked with uh, Pacific University, which was um, a D3 program there. I'd worked with the uh, Timbers Academy. Um, I had worked at Grant High School, which is one of the high school rotations I had and kind of where I got most, most of my high school experience. And then I uh, spent my last year working with the University of Portland. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so I primarily worked at University of Portland with the women's basketball, men's basketball, and then uh, track and field there. Oh, very cool. So you have a kind of experience in all sports, so you kind of know all the yeah. potential injuries and, and, and you know, ways to treat them. So. Right. Awesome. Yeah. And so following graduation from your master's, did you then come back to Foster City or did you? Yeah. Um, so my whole, I guess, career has been kind of nonstop since I started. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. I went to University of Oregon um, right out of high school. And then a couple months later, I started my master's. And then a week after I graduated, I, <laughs> I started here. Oh, really? Oh, one yeah. week. Okay. Um, that was mid-June, right? Yeah. M- or actually end of May. End of May. Okay. So almost coming up on a year. Yeah, so it's been about a year now. They wanted me to start earlier because, as um, you know, a year ago it was crazy with sports. They're all of them were going at the same time, <laughs> and so they're like, spring. "We need someone else." But unfortunately, I was still finishing school. So as soon as I finished my uh, my master's, I hopped on over here so I could get started right away. Excellent. How did you find out about the job? You, are you connected with people at Sarah or um, did you just look on the site? Kind of. I mean, I know um, Lisa Callagy. Oh, yeah. So I played uh, baseball with her son growing course, up. Ryan. And so, yeah, I reached yeah. out to her and she kind of helped me with that process. Oh, good. But there wasn't like a formal opening, I'd say. Um, as I was starting to apply to jobs, um, finishing up my master's, Sarah was kind of like, one of the schools I was interested in was like working at, but they didn't have any openings. So I reached out to Justin just like kind of on a whim saying, do you guys have any openings? And at the time he said no. And then like about three weeks later, he uh, reached out and said, actually, would you like to interview for an assistant position? And, Great. Uh, yeah, the rest was history. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it was good timing because I'm sure that they were right at the time that you were calling and we were realizing the need for additional help, right? Right. So. That's great. And so, you, like you said, you grew up in Foster City. You went to San Mateo, mm-hmm. Bowditch probably as a yeah, middle Bowditch, schooler. Yet. Yeah. Um, and so what did you know about Sarah and how um, has that, how's your experience here mm-hmm. differed or has it, you know, has it changed? Yeah. I mean, uh, you always knew growing up that Sarah was kind of a, a powerhouse. Um, so that was always one of the things that popped out to me when I was thinking about coming back here. Um, and I had a few friends that had went to Sarah as well, just growing up in the area. So I knew plenty about their sports programs and just the school itself. Um, And then my experience here has been pretty great so far. Um, I mean, you can't complain when the first year you start, the football (laughs) team goes state open division championships with modern day. That was pretty good. That was pretty good timing, right? Yeah. Um, But it's been great. You know, you you go to a a place usually because you're working with the athletes. You that's like kind of why you're going there and work with the teams. But I mean, like overall like working outside the athletes, it's been a great experience too. Like working with all the faculty, the coaches, that's been a great experience, which makes it even better. Sure. So, and how do you think, you know, because you're working with high schoolers and you were saying that, you know, as a high schooler yourself, you recognized that, you know, you, you had a, a fondness for athletic training just as a, um, I guess as a patient, if you will, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think your experience being injured and being helped by athletic trainers has helped you in your approach to helping students? Yeah, in um, high school? you definitely get like an appreciation for the process. Um, and you kind of understand what they're going through now. Um, you know, injuries are tough. And there's a huge emotional side to that. And so kind of understanding where they're coming from and what they're feeling, especially at a high school level mind thinking um 
definitely helps with that process. Right. I remember we, um, when we spoke, we had Duke on the, on the podcast a couple mm-hmm. months ago. And one of the things, I mean, that was a whole side of it right, that, right. you know, I naively wasn't thinking of, you know, you, re- you really think about the, the body and how it works, the anatomy of it, you know, and, and the, mm-hmm. you know, physical therapy and all that good stuff. But you don't really think about the disappointment of not being able to play or, you know, what, I mean, there's so much, it's a, it's a distraction from their life to be able to you know, sit on the sideline and not be able to be in. So right. it's good that you guys are thinking about the whole child. Yeah, like, exactly. Like whole, whole man, whole young man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Good. Yeah. Well, um, so now you're here. This is great. We love having you. I know you've helped yes. so many athletes and you're, you and Duke work so well. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the National Athletic Trainers Association award that you applied for and received, mm-hmm. um, which is a huge deal. Um, tell us a little bit about it. And before I start, I just want to say that we are the only Bay Area school to have it, um, which is amazing. And uh, yesterday we were or- awarded a banner, which we will proudly display, and we'll be using um, the logo on all of our athletics uh, sites because yeah. it's a really, really big deal. So why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, so this um, this award is um, given out by the National Athletic Trainers Association, which is one of our like overseeing um, associations for athletic training. And it's a uh, criteria-based award. And so before I get into it, a lot of the stuff was already in place to meet that criteria. Um, Duke and, you know, the whole athletic department did a great job already. So not to say that we weren't doing good things before I even came here. Right. Um, but you documented it and, and made sure it was made aware of. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so then once I kind of came on board, um, you know, gave us a little more uh, time to have both Duke and I work on kind of meeting that criteria because now instead of only our focus is on the students. Like we can still have Duke completely given a hundred percent focus and I can start kind of dabbling into the criteria to kind of reach those very like specific goals. That's great. Um, which one I, the big one was rehearsing our emergency action plan um, that Mike Fidelli helped kind of um, arrange for us with the local emergency departments through the, the alumni network, which is I'm learning a very great Pretty network here. Yes, yeah. It's nice. Yes. Um, so yeah, that it's been a, uh, so tell us about the, that experience, if you will, if you can just go into it for d- in detail. I mean, so you're the emergency action plan in case of what and what would you know, what did you guys rehearse and how, you know, how yeah. many people kind of were a part of it? Um, so they're not really like specifics necessarily. Me and Duke kind of brainstormed what are more common emergencies we might see, especially mm-hmm. kind of with football. Um, so like cervical spine, maybe heat stroke and just kind of talking through with um, local emergency departments how they would like us to handle it and what they would prefer. So that way when they're coming on site that it's already a smooth process. We know what they like and just gives better care to the students when those emergencies or not when, if, if, if hopefully they don't, if but they never happen yet. But uh, <laughs> if, if it happens that way, we're all on board just quicker care. And so. Absolutely. I mean, sometimes part of, part of an emergency is not knowing you're shocked and you're, you know, Right. Traumatized sometimes, and so you don't really know exactly. what you're going to do. So that's really awesome. So do you have police, fire, and EMT? Um, or? Just, like, EMT, fire department yeah. um, come out. And so we practiced spine boarding. We used uh, Ryan Mahe as our little, uh, <laughs> our dummy. We love se. using Ryan Mahe. Yeah. We use him for everything. He's a great, <laughs> great padre. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we uh, just kind of talked through a bunch of scenarios. But that was the one we, like, really practiced where we had the spine board out. We strapped him down. So that was a uh, good, good practice. Yeah, definitely. And then, um, and I'm sure that, that, you know, the EMT and fire, I mean, they, they're here for, for some things for fun, exactly. but it's nice for them to be able to say, okay, what access point is faster? You know, how can we right. have a quicker response time? And, and exactly. um, you know, in terms of just even location, you know, where, how do we get out, you know, mm-hmm. with a bunch of people, you know, on site, if it's a big game or something. So exactly. Really cool. So that, that was a, a good practice and just kind of getting that down, um, especially for the people who probably will come out in a, in a, in response to an emergency. Right. Um, I think we had like an incident in the parking lot um, with one of the Padre family members um, and what that team came out actually. So it's just good continuance of care. Yeah, and just good relationship building too, right? Just mm-hmm. so that, you know, if you ever have questions on something too, just in a non-emergency situation, just to have that right. that relationship. What were some of the other um, criteria that you documented or met mm-hmm. um, with further work or whatever? Um, we updated our emergency action plan. There was um, a few components that we just needed to detail a little more. Um, kind of getting like manufacturer guidelines out there for the equipment. Um, there's a few more. We had to just kind of do like a self-assessment and just see what kind of things we were missing in the athletic training room. So we kind of got some more biohazard bins, um, kind of help 
or we kind of moved around maybe the AEDs a little bit, but uh, those are some of the top ones I can recall. Excellent. Yeah. So the award is the Safe Sport School Award, and you are first team, mm-hmm. right? So there's there are different levels, and the yeah. the award it, it extends for three years, and then do yeah. you reapply? Yeah, is that you how just it works? reapply. And do you do you have additional goals on that reapplication process, or is it just? Um, not necessarily. I mean, we're always looking to improve, improve. but I don't think I mean, unless they change the criteria that there's more to meet, I don't think we'll have to do much more just to reapply now that we've kind of already set these standards. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah. And so then, um, so the goal would be to ultimately always maintain exactly, this. Exactly, just kind of recycle through this award and um, just continue keeping that excellence standard. Right. So. I mean, it is really a big deal. I mean, I think that when we... We first talked about it, what, like a month ago or something. We did some social media, and we mm-hmm. did an, an article on it just to – this is prior to the banner celebration yesterday. Um, but we kind of – I think at least I did. I got the impression that it was – you know, a, more schools had it, but the fact that we're the only in the Bay Area and the sixth in California to be awarded this time, that's a really big deal. So yeah, I, I didn't hats even off know to that. You guys. So. Well, I just yeah. got the email this morning from the gentleman that was awarding the banner right, right. yesterday at the ceremony. <laughs> so um, that's really exciting. And so um, – just overall, why don't we talk just about like nutrition and boys and spring break and going into, you know, cycling out of the spring season, getting into summer. What mm-hmm. are some tips that you can kind of, you know, give us in terms of like how to keep our athletes, you know, healthy, conditioned and ready for the rigors of the fall sports? Yeah, the summer? Um, usually our biggest tip is the hardest one for kids is just taking a little time off. Um, everyone loves to do a million sports kind of go year round and you still need a little bit of break before we kind of hop into like summer um, conditioning stuff and fall sports because it can really take a toll as long as you're continually doing activity. So that's usually the toughest tip for kids is just sit down, relax, maybe read a book, play some video games. I don't know, but right. just taking some time off of sports, which right. is also good for the mind as well and just kind of giving them a mental break. Um, so that's our, I'd say probably our biggest tip, which we kind of push a lot on, uh, on these guys. Um, and then as far as nutrition, um, I feel like just coming up with like a consistent, um, meal plan, maybe, um, finding it's a good time. Summer is a good time to experiment kind of what or how you would go through like a dietary, um, change and plan and just kind of, uh, figuring out what kind of goals you're trying to reach, um, for the season. So you can kind of start working on that. Um, so it's a good time also during summer just to kind of sit down and just kind of reflect what are your goals and then you can kind of um, figure out what your nutrition you need to meet to reach those goals, whether you want to put on weight for uh, football maybe or trying to lose weight to get faster, you know, whatever those goals might be. Right, so yeah. taking that, so the time that you take physically from from the sport, also take the time to do some goal assessment. And yeah. That's good Good advice. And so the summer, you were here last summer. This was your first summer. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that the weight room's open. Yeah. You know, we've got workouts going on. Um, what is that? I mean, can you just give us just a brief overview of, of how we prepare athletes and what's open, what's accessible to them? Yeah. Um, so primarily football will be taking up a lot of the weight room in the, in the field. Um, but yeah, as far, I mean, most teams I'd say probably have some kind of summer workouts, whether they're here, um, or somewhere offsite, but, um, yeah, football will come in, the weight room will be open. They'll be doing lifting, they'll be conditioning, So if you do want to get conditioning, you could still go to football workouts. Right. You know, you may not necessarily strive to play football, or maybe you do, but uh, those will be open for any students who want to work out. And then um, me and Duke will have the athletic training room open as well. So um, we'll be rehabbing kids who maybe are bringing in injuries from summer or during summer. So um, if you are injured athlete and currently going to Sarah, you can always come in and still get some uh, treatment in. It's totally open too. So it's also a good time to kind of get your body right for the school year. That's great. That sounds, I mean, to me, that's amazing actually that during the summer, everything still stays open. Is that common for high schools? Or? Um, I would say not too much. Um, at least from the athletic training perspective, usually, um, or not usually, but sometimes athletic trainers won't be working in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll kind of work on like a 10 month, uh, I guess, contract per se. Um, so it's a cool opportunity, I think, for the athletes mostly that they'll have kind of any neat help, they'll have um, any um, assistance they would need for if they're injured or they want to get some 
um, advice, all that stuff. So right, yeah. well, and it's a place to go, a positive, healthy place to go and mm-hmm. you know work out or learn more about nutrition. I mean, it sounds like you guys are are highly um, aware of what yeah. you know a, an adolescent boy needs to thrive, right? Um, so spring, we're getting out of like you have seven sports going on. Yes. How are you guys holding up? How is I mean, has it been taxing on your department or? Um, we're doing good. Um, I think the start of the season is always rough because there's a slight overlap with um, the fall sports and CCS or winter, the winter sports. Yeah. Yes. And so that, that can be a little bit uh, stressful, but it's calmed down a little bit now. It's a little more manageable. Um, and when it's more manageable, it's a little more uh, fun because we can give more attention to the athletes themselves. So sure. do you see a lot of, um, cause I know like some of these kids, like they walk off one field and go on to the next yeah. within, I mean, it's a totally different part of the body that's being, you know, worked harder right Right. than the other so do you see a lot of you know switch sport injuries if you call it that yeah (laughs) i'd say uh yeah you'll get a lot of uh shin splints with um track and field right i'll bet um especially um with athletes who maybe participated in the fall sports and then took the winter off and now are hopping to a spring sport and they probably didn't do too much during the right the the winter really assessing their goals exactly (laughs) (laughs) taking that time off exactly um yeah i mean that's that's what you'll kind of see the most, I'd say. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, um, overall, just if you could just tell me like in a phrase, a word, or just a couple words, like what do you see, what's a common theme that you see for all the student athletes that we have at Sarah? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think something I definitely picked up on, I mean, at least compared to my high school time, is just like the level of dedication for the student athletes here. Um, a lot of them are highly motivated to, you know, succeed in both academics and sports, and so... I think that really reflects um, in the athletic training room, especially when they're injured, they're really motivated to kind of get back to their sport, which makes our job easier. We're not trying to drag somebody into the athletic training room or people aren't showing up. Uh, Usually the athletes are coming in consistently trying to get themselves better so they can go back out there, which is great. That's that's the best part. Yeah, That's wonderful. Well, I I, I would say that I think that that dedication is felt throughout the entire athletics department. Mm -hmm. You know, your team and everyone involved, all the coaches, you know, the AD, assistant AD, all the, you know, fitness trainers as well as athletic trainers. I mean, the support and and just focus and love for these boys. I mean, the love mm-hmm. is there. It's um, And I know that the boys don't want to let you guys down either, and, and that's a good right. relationship to have in terms of motivation. Um, and, and there, I just, there's, there are a lot of students we have here on campus that aren't necessarily athletes themselves, but are interested in athletic training Mm -hmm. and they're interested in, you know, sports medicine or managing teams. You know, can you talk a little bit about, um, the opportunities that those students have to get involved and help you guys? Yeah. So we've been trying to develop like a, a sports medicine club that it's currently in place, but we're still working on kind of fine tuning some things. Um, but their opportunity is available to um, any students who would like to get involved with either sports or medicine themselves, um, kind of working with the athletes. We'll teach them about anatomy, maybe some taping stuff. And then um, it's really fun during football season because uh, those students will travel with us. They'll help us with hydration. Um, they'll help us with anything we need on the field. And then uh, we even took a few of our students, um, sports med students, to the state football championship game, which is a fun experience, I think, overall for them. Oh yeah, yeah, the excitement of it all. Well, I have a I have a junior here at Sarah, and mm. so we're doing you know all the college you know trying to get familiar with everything, um, which is totally foreign and totally another ten podcast. But um, but one of the things we learned is that sports medicine is one of the it's like up there with engineering in terms of favored majors. So yeah. it's uh, definitely I'm I'm sure it's probably always been very popular, but um, it's nice to know that at Sarah we're doing some or giving our students some you know, exposure mm-hmm. to it so that if that is a field they're interested in, it's something that right. they can, uh, you know, say they have a little experience with. You don't even need to be like interested in like sports medicine per se. It could just be medicine, like healthcare, because we're still, you know, working with patients. We're still learning about the body. So it's all still relevant no matter what field. So it doesn't have to be like athletic training per se. Right. So that's what I think is great too. Um, like one of our sports med students who um, wants to become a physician, like he's, one of our top students probably in the program and that he's not necessarily into athletic training per se. So it's very open to anybody. That's great. That's wonderful. And if somebody wanted to get involved, would they just go um, onto our website is, or or just go through um, um, Coach Language? Yeah, you can go through Language. There's also like the the club sign up day and that's when we'll have like a lot of students sign up throughout for the year. Awesome. Yeah. 
Great. Well, I guess my last question before um, before I thank you so much for your time would be: Do you have any? I mean, this was like an, an enormous. This award is is so tremendous, and um, and it was. I'm so happy that you brought it to Sarah and mm -hmm. and and really worked on that with Duke. Um, are there any other goals you have moving forward into your second year here? And um, I'm probably picking backing off of Duke's goals, which is he's uh, really motivated to just keep improving the athletic training facility. Um, I think he talked about a little bit, just kind of trying to push it to almost like a college level um, room. And so that it's like exciting when you go in there, you know, going to the athletic training room, it's always not the best vibe sometimes because sure. you're injured. And so just kind of improving the facility, making it um, as top notch as we can is uh, definitely a big goal. So I'm kind of on that with him as well. Awesome. It could match our, our collegiate level weight room. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Kevin it is such a pleasure to talk to you as always. And you know what you've done for our athletes and um, just for our overall environment is amazing. So we just love having you here. And I thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me. All right. We always leave with the Go Padres. So I'm gonna let you do it. Go Padres. Go Padres. <laughs>